Hello and welcome into the Sunday Sports Extra. I'm Andrew Chernoff. We have another very busy show for you tonight as we take you out to Dallas Cowboys camp to see what the team's up to. Plus, we have another golf tip segment for you with Beaumont Country Club pro Rob Litsky. But first, we begin with high school football. As we all know, practice begins August 4th and that week zero is at the end of August. What rules changes will we notice this year? Here to talk to us about those are Southeast Texas football officials, President Jim Campbell and Big 12 football official Mike DeFee. Guys, thank you guys very much for coming on the show. Well, thank you for having us. Yeah, happy, happy to be here. Two big rule changes this year. Jim, talk about the blocking change. Uh, this year, uh, blocks below the waist have been placed so that there's a, a low blocking zone. That's seven yards either side of the football, five yards downfield, and all the way back to the goal line. And players lined up on the line there are unrestricted as far as how they can block low uh, as long as the ball is still in that zone. Players outside of that zone are restricted from blocking low. They have to be within a 10 to 2 on the clock face area. And low is under the waist. Low is under the waist okay. is, is how we were, what we're referring to. And as long as they're within that 10 to 2 area, uh, their low block is legal if they are restricted except if their immediate move is back to the inside, then that block becomes illegal. Then the other big change, Mike, is the receivers when they go across the middle, because I know we've seen that from every level down, now it's already to high school. Yeah, the, the targeting rule uh, in the past, uh, we've had targeting for a number of years, and what we're really talking about here is defenseless players, receivers, kick returners, uh, players on the ground. Uh, uh, there's a number of different uh, people that are uh, termed defenseless. Uh, it's been a 15-yard penalty this year. The new rule is that if you're called for that, you're ejected. First uh, time? First time. Okay. Uh, so if you're called, at the end of the day, uh, the NFL gets a lot of publicity because of the concussions and the lawsuits. There are already uh, lawsuits in the NCAA, and so we're, just, we're trying to get that, that illegal high hit out of the game. We're, we're not we're wanting to take the physicality of the game out but we've got to lower our, our target area, and that is you know, chest and down. We, we, we can hit you as hard as we want in here, but we've got to get away from hit, uh, striking in, uh, in the head area. We usually take a look at how this team is practicing or what, how this coach is preparing to get his players motivated. What do both of you do to get ready for football season? Well, I attend uh, clinics like we talked about earlier. There's, we have them in Houston, in College Station, in, in Nagadoches, and in Tyler. And I will go to some of those. We're having our state meeting uh, next weekend. I'll be at that. Uh, we start meeting the third Monday in July, and we meet every Monday till the first Monday in February. And we discuss rule changes. We discuss rules. We discuss mechanics, which is where you're supposed to be and when you're supposed to be there, and uh, plays that we've seen and, and unusual situations that have come up. So we spend a lot of time. We see it every week. The crowd's always against you. Flat out. I mean, it, it could be any call, and at least half the stadium is against mm -hmm. you. How do you put up with that week in and week out? Basically, you just tune it out. It's it, it becomes How do you do that? just they're a very, they're very it, loud. Oh yeah, but it becomes just a dull roar. It, it's focus. That's the success of a, a good football official is being able to focus for two and a half hours in a high school game, for three and a half plus hours in a college game, play after play after play. Yeah. I tell people you've never lived until you've been booed by 100,000 people. <laughs> <laughs> Very few people can cross that off their bucket list. <laughs> no, that's true. <laughs> and then where, where can we expect to see both of you this year? The uh, majority well, of your games. Myself, I'm no longer on the field. I, I keep clocks for the high school okay. levels here. Uh, I'm also going to be doing some evaluation for our chapter to try to get our officials better. I'm also a clock operator in the Southland Conference. So I will be uh, running clocks them for them also on Saturdays. Yeah. And, and Mike, in fact, I work in one ball game with Mike. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I it's a dangerous up, duo right there. <laughs> <laughs> I open up with the New York Football Classic. Uh, it's up in the Meadowlands on August the 31st, Syracuse and Penn State. Syracuse is my alma mater, by the way. <laughs> okay, should be yeah. a great game. So uh, looking us. forward to it. Uh, and uh, the next week, I've got West Virginia at Oklahoma to open up conference play. Uh, our association with the Big 12 has partnered with the Mountain West and the Southland, so I've got two games in the Mountain West. Uh, I go to uh, Boise State. I have Air Force at Boise in week three, and I have Hawaii at uh, uh, Nevada uh, week four. And so uh, from there, we'll, we'll see, but majority of my work will be in the Big 12. Mike, Jim, thank you guys both for coming on the show and telling us a little about how well, the upcoming season should go. Thank you for having us, Andrew. We've really enjoyed it. Thank you. Much. Thank yeah. you. Mike, thank, thank you guys you. very much. Appreciate that.